Hello, welcome to Drinks with Ron. I'm Ron, and this is Ted Jansen. And he's a good boy. He's a very good boy. But that's not why we're here today. No, sir, I uh, was cracking into a batch of my County K Ale, which is, some of you may know, it's my grandpa's old recipe that we found laying around uh, after we cleaned out their house. Very vague. I took my first couple cracks at it, and I believe this is batch uh, three or four. Uh, no, this might be batch four or five, actually. Uh, that was smooth. Daddy don't care. He, he still likes me, mainly because I give him food. Um, but yeah, I uh, got the house emptied out, and I thought, well, I'll take a crack and see how this batch came out. You can see from the pour there, it's, uh, it's like it's carbonated pretty well. Got a decent head on there. You can get a look at the bubbles. Um, yeah, I mean, it's carbonated up pretty good in there. It's got almost more of a champagne-y look, and that seems to be really consistent uh, with this beer. I'm led to believe that's due to how much white sugar I use in it. But, uh, who can say? All I know is it's got about 6.9% alcohol, it's a family tradition, and it makes me feel warm and pleasant inside. Oh yeah, even about... 15 minutes removed from mouthwash. This guy's pretty good. But as I said, not why I'm here today. Um, I guess uh, I'll just, I, I'll tell you, I got an old, a little Nintendo box. You know, the original NES. It's not the actual Nintendo one with like 30 games in it. It's some uh, foreign knockoff job with like 600 games in it. Um, but I started flipping through and I saw the titles and some of them I thought, Do I never heard of these games. Uh, what the hell are they? Uh, odd names, uh, sequels to games that I didn't think existed. Um, I have like Mario 7, 8, and 9, uh, Mario in Space, Bubble Mario, Mario Kamikaze. I, so I started flipping through them all one at a time, just trying to check them out, see what they were all about. Um, well, I... Uh, I started playing Mario Kamikaze, which I believe there's three of them. Jesus Christ, Ted Jansen. Do you get it? So uh, I started playing uh, Mario Kamikaze, number one. And I started playing, and I looked, and I'm like, God, Mario looks kind of weird. You know, what, did they change the color on his shorts? Because at first I thought he was naked. I mean, it looked like, oh, that, that got your, yes, thank you. Very, very good. I do love Ted Jansen kisses. Please tell me you haven't eaten shit lately. Okay, very good. Spotlight's yours. Uh, anyway, so I thought, man, Mario almost looks naked. Um, so I got a little closer, and I thought, no, 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 they just changed the color of his overalls. So I'm going about five, ten seconds in the stage, and my wife says, Mario's naked! I said, no, 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 I thought the same thing, you gotta look closer. So I got closer, and you know, you see the little buttons on his overalls? Well, they weren't buttons, they were nipples. And uh, when you gotta take a little closer look, there was just a... A little dangle there underneath Mario. Sure enough, as uh, Mike Myers would say, the twig and two berries, they're digitally hanging there in all their 8-bit glory. So I thought, yes, that's definitely Mario's penis. Now I've got to do some homework. So this is where I'm going to wind the tape back um, the better part of a year <laughs> and change the subject on you. Hold with me here, there's a minor Quentin Tarantino type feel going on in this story. Um, Ted Jansen, you son of a bitch, you don't eat a New Year's Eve corn. Well, you do. Anywho, uh, I was on this chat group last year, you may have seen the episode I did on it. Uh, it, was a, it was a good time. There was a lot of people in there. Uh, I don't know how I uh, try to explain it briefly. Basically, uh, they would say some horrible things, and instead of being shunned, people laughed. So I thought, I'm home. But it got a little out of hand, because I realized uh, none of the guys there were trying to be any other guy's friends, if you follow my drift. And there was a couple of uh, ladies that were really looking for attention. I'll just say those two things that way, and say I had to eventually leave the group, even though I was having a good time, like I said. These guys, I wasn't going to hang out and have a beer with any of them. They were interested in one thing, and, uh, you know, and some of the ladies, I just couldn't take it anymore. 
So even though I was having a good time, I left. But I had a handful of other chat groups on this app, including one I joined around the same time that was called Homebrew. Because clearly, right? What does Ron do? So I get into this Homebrew group and start getting bombarded with uh, Pokemon stuff. Uh, Pokemon? What the hell? And I started getting all mad. I was like, dude, this is Homebrew, not fucking Pokemon. Well then, around Valentine's Day, when somebody posted the video of candy they got from their friends with the fake high-pitchy voice, I started getting near the edge, but I went over the edge when they posted the butt plug with the furry tail connected. That was like, wait, what the hell group am I in here? So, of course, me and a few other people lost it. The guy said, butt holy man. I said, yeah, you gotta catch them all with your anus. So, uh, you know, we ripped them apart for a while. Then I did some research and found out, oh shit, homebrew is a Nintendo thing. It's called Nintendo Homebrew, where you kind of hack the games, change the code, and rewrite it to do however you want. So after I found that out, I had to go back in, uh, save some face, say, hey, sorry fellas, I didn't mean to be making fun of all of you, calling you a bunch of Pokemon butt plug losers, etc. Um, I didn't realize I'm actually in the wrong place. Um, but you might want to change the name from Homebrew to Nintendo Homebrew, because they're vastly different things. So I uh, found another group, blah blah blah, went in, invited people out of there. Anyway, uh, not really relevant. Well, let's just say, now you know what Nintendo Homebrew is, and how it relates to furry butt plugs. But how does it relate to Naked Mario? We'll bring this full circle. Um, so I did some research, because not only was Mario's penis hanging out, um, but the very first stage there's a wall and there's nowhere to go. So I had to look online, figure out how to get through this stage, because apparently you can magically pass through walls, now that the code's been changed. Um, but essentially this was a famous homebrew, to the point where there was three of them and it was included on a game compilation. So as I went down the list, I realized half of these are homebrew games. Mario in Space is just Galaga with the icons changed, which I love Galaga, but I lost my mind because the icons are bigger than the, the bullets will actually kill. So you can hit the sides of them, but it's not a hit, it's a miss, and uh, I, yeah, I lose my mind. Uh, Balloon Mario is actually Joust with the main ostrich-like character changed to a Mario. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of homebrew stuff, little changes like that. Kung Fu Mario was the original Nintendo game Kung Fu, with Mario's head put on the other body. Uh, just a lot of weird, odd, fun stuff. So I thought, yeah, that was kind of interesting. A year later, uh, here we go, and I, uh, why does homebrew always come down to an animated penis or a furry butt plug? I don't know. Apparently, I guess you just have to assume that these homebrew people don't get out much, and... I can totally relate to that as a guy sitting in his basement talking to a camera, drinking a beer in an empty house, waiting for the dog to come in and steal my shot. So with that said, um, God, this thing's fucking carbonated beautifully for a change. So I'm gonna brag that up a little bit more and uh, polish this guy off, maybe make a pizza, see if I can't get drunk enough for a second episode. So for Drinks with Ron, I'm Ron, signing off.